All right, if you have a 2000 through 2002 Toyota product, Tundra, uh, Sequoia, 470 equipped, other models, you've got a check engine light illuminated, store code P0135, P0136, P0155, P0156. I got a video for you here. You're watching the Car Doctor channel. Hey, thanks for stopping by the Car Doctor channel. I'm Tim. We're here at the repair shop of Donor Automotive in beautiful, sunny Anchorage, Alaska, where it's a balmy 30 degrees outside, midwinter, almost, almost Christmas here, and we're unseasonably warm for like the third or fourth winter in a row. No snow outside. It's like we're living in Arizona. Uh, Texas got snow a couple days ago. What's going on, guys? I don't know but it could be related to global warming caused by Toyota vehicles. At least the ones that have a faulty or defective O2 sensor, maybe the heater circuit has is, is gone wacky on it. Uh, but you came to the right place, we're gonna help you be green conscious and reduce global warming and get your check engine light off. First thing we're gonna do is pull the codes on this truck. We'll go through uh, common scenarios and the way you can diagnose and repair this common issue. Okay, we've uh, gone ahead and connected our Solus scan tool. We'll just check the codes here. Just give me a current code P0156. O2 sensor heater circuit fault bank 2 sensor 1. Same code in history, and there's no pending codes. We'll just back out of that, go over and check out the uh, repair information on this car. If you do have either the code P0135 or P0155, then there is a technical service bulletin related to these codes. The Toyota TSB discusses the known issues with the originally equipped O2 sensors on this vehicle. The replacement sensors are updated to address this problem. At this point, we're going to go ahead and remove the old O2 sensor and take it over to the bench and discuss the specific circuit tests that are going to confirm this issue. Okay, this is actually a pretty easy O2 sensor to change, especially if you can raise the vehicle up. But uh, one thing that's going to be helpful is an O2 sensor socket. This is a little 7 8 socket with a little cutout on it. And uh, I've got a half inch wobbly ratchet. And uh, again, the, the bank 2 is on the right side. So it's just up in here, um, right above the header pipe on the back of the manifold. We'll just reach up and disconnect the connector and remove the sensor. Let's take a screwdriver and depress the little tab, the lock on the wiring harness, and release the connector here. Sorry, I don't have such a good view of things. A little bit tight. go But tight there. Oh, camera's not focusing really good here. We'll hopefully, you get the picture here. Just a basic O2 sensor swap. go 
Okay, uh, I've got my ohms meter out and I've, I've pulled the O2 sensor out. I already know this is the problem, but I'll just show you on the, on the O2 sensor in, checking the resistance across the heater circuit. And it would be on these two black wires uh, that come out of the uh, O2 sensor. Um, and uh, 11 to 16 ohms across that circuit is the uh, spec on the value for resistance. So as you can see here, we have like seven milli ohms, which is not even close. So we got a serious problem and we got a bad O2, but I already knew that. So, go put another one in. So we're using the Denso OE part on this. It's available at Advance or CarQuest stores and it's going to save you a considerable amount of money over the OE part if you were to go, for instance, to Toyota to acquire that. But I would definitely recommend going with an OE grade part and not some uh, Sleezo brand. Let's uh, check the resistance value on our new Benzo sensor. Sixteen ohms, sixteen point one. So looking good. Okay, basically uh, to verify the circuit on the harness side to the ECU, we're gonna check for voltage. You should have battery voltage or uh, somewhere around 12 volts uh, at the red wire, between the red wire on the harness side and a ground, we should be getting 12 volts, which we do. And then uh, we check the solid yellow wire uh, for uh, open or short to ground between the sensor and the engine control module. Well, to be honest with you, it's, it's pretty hard to check the wire, uh, the yellow wire. You got to go uh, disconnect the ECU and just do a resistance check uh, between both ends of the yellow wire. Um, but uh, that's what that takes. So uh, we do have 12 volts on the red wire. So we've confirmed that the uh, voltage side is good and there appears to be no short to ground or open circuit on the yellow wire between the ECU and the harness connector here at the O2. So uh, we verified that the heater circuit is indeed a problem with the, the existing O2. So we're gonna go ahead and replace it. Now we'll go ahead and thread in our replacement sensor. already got a little bit of anti-seize on the threads. Most quality O2 sensors will have the anti-seize applied to the threads already or come with a small amount of anti-seize. You want to get it on the threads themselves, not on the tip of the sensor. It wouldn't be good for it. And just tighten her down. There we go reconnect the wiring harness. and lower it down and verify the repairs. Yeah, we'll just take this one back out uh, for a good road test, get those readiness monitors set, make sure it passes the O2 checks and whatnot, check our fuel trims. But 
pretty sure we got this one nailed down. Anytime you see the heater circuit way out of resistance, that's going to be the cause of your code, especially if you have that PO136 or PO156. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, an updated O2 sensor. Of course, we always recommend replacing all four, but no takers this time of year. Everyone's kind of tied up for Christmas and they're just getting by. But uh, that's okay. I mean, the other ones could go another 100,000 miles. I don't know. But for, you know, fuel efficiency and ongoing maintenance, uh, it's never a bad idea. This one's got 135,000 miles on the clock, so it, it'd be a good idea. I, I offered to do that, and they declined, but that's fine. We just do what we can. All right. Hey, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next Car Doctor video. Have a good one.